Hey, this is Jason Oppenheim, the owner and the broker here at the Oppenheim Group. Uh, we've been here for about four and a half years since we opened up these doors, and since then we've sold over a billion dollars in real estate. Uh, so how did you get started selling real estate? Well, I was a lawyer for many years, and that's what I thought I wanted to be uh, for a long time. I mean, went to law school, got into my student debt, worked at a large law firm for many years, uh, but I just wasn't completely fulfilled, and my family had done real estate. I've always loved real estate, always been really passionate about it. Uh, everything, the architecture, design, uh, furnishings, the contracting aspects of it, uh, buying and selling for myself, buying and selling for other people. I just, I love everything real estate. And I think there's no better place to do real estate than Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, amazing homes, the land, all the yeah. nuances what of it. What was it like though working as a lawyer? And then, because that, that was really what spurred it, right? Working as a lawyer and working the long hours, right? Yeah, uh, I, said, I, have a, I have a twin brother that I work with. He was a lawyer too, he quit before me and he really gave me the confidence to leave law. I enjoyed uh, being a lawyer, but it was very grinding and your work isn't very tangible. Real estate is, is a tangible profession. You get to see what you're selling, you get to see what you're building, uh, and in law I didn't get that satisfaction. Mm -hmm. As a lawyer I was working 15 hour days. I mean it was, it was grinding, it was grueling. I work really hard as a real estate agent, but it just doesn't it feel. It feels like work. Yeah, it doesn't That's feel like I'm working. It. So I don't even. It's not that I mind hard hours. It's that right. I mind like grinding in a cold office when no one's around, like yeah. in the middle of Century City. I don't mind being here, hanging out with right. you, working until you know midnight if we need to. That's how I've explained it too um, to everybody. What it's like working as a real estate agent. To me, it really feels like you go and hang out with your friends all day, and you go and see these amazing houses, and somehow you get paid to do this. I, it's I, I well, I don't want right. to. My the, my concern <laughs> is always that we it's so glamorized yeah. and celebritized that like everyone's like, oh my god, I can go make five million dollars a year selling hanging you know twenty million dollars. Right? Yes. <laughs> so yes, is it the best job in the world? Yes, it is. Um, and is it lucrative? Yes, it is. And is, I, I, do I have, could I have any more fun doing anything else? No, I could not. So I think all those things are true. But that said, it didn't start off that way. I don't want people to think that you just, you walk into the Oppenheim group and you, know, you start making a million dollars a year, hanging out with cool people, selling amazing real estate. So how did you get started? Well, I'm glad you asked because this is the part that's real. You don't see on these videos where everyone's making it, you know, look, we just did it, we just toured a $40 million house. Right. You don't just walk into a $40 million house or get a $40 million listing. I started in real estate uh, knowing nobody. Uh, I was in debt. I was driving my grandfather's $700, like 1994 gold Lincoln that overheated all the time. I remember I used to have to put antifreeze in because that thing would like <laughs> blow up all the time. And this was like, this is just a few years ago. That's crazy. It, it uh, really was. Yeah, it's I mean, you what, met me. Seven, you me we, seven years ago. Seven years ago, yeah. I was, you saw me, you saw yeah. my desk. My desk yeah. was two feet wide. It was $24. Yeah, office was the size of my closet. Basically. Well, it wasn't even my, I shared that office with, oh, with Stacy and Joyce. Right. I mean, I had the corner of the office, right. that little, little Ikea desk yeah. and a chair where I just listened to everything that was going on. I didn't make a dollar for eight months. Uh, I was going in, so I was already in like $40,000 of debt. Yeah. And by, I think within the first eight months, I was in like 50 or $60,000 of debt. Um, but I knew this is what I wanted to do. I easily could have gone back to being a lawyer and made you know, $300,000 on year one. Mm -hmm. But I just didn't want to. I wanted to, to, not that I wanted to struggle, but I wanted to find something I was more passionate about. Um, and I didn't care how long it took. I knew I'd be successful. I just knew we had to, I had to grind. I mean, I think actually we have a lot of similarities because we were in, I don't know if everyone knows, but Graham was one of the first people I met when I did real estate. We had offices, if you want to call them offices, yeah. right next to each other. He was sharing his with like four people. I was That's sharing true. mine with two people. Yeah. And we were across the hall and he was hustling little leases and I, was hustling anything I could. I mean, you were making more, a lot more money than me just hustling leases. Oh, um, times have changed. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think we're both doing all right. Oh, um, but it, it was not glamorous. I was doing everything myself. Honestly, I would get so stressed out. I was working so hard that I would like get tears in my eyes at night because I, and this is when I was getting a little bit more yeah. successful, but it was still me. I didn't know if I could afford an assistant. Um, but I'm actually already, I'm, I'm skipping forward because the first couple of years I didn't make shit. Yeah. I made, well, that, that's, I, I, don't, I don't want to piss on what I made because yes. it was decent, but I made maybe you know, $40,000 my first year, $50,000, something like that. Yeah. It wasn't until my third year that I was making a few hundred thousand dollars and then you know, right. everything snowballed. How did you meet all the clients? Because that's what a lot of people think that like, okay, I start, but then what do I yeah. do? Well, I, that's the most difficult part. Getting, and I tell every one of my agents this, your first five deals are significantly harder than your next 25 deals. And I think you would attest to this That's as true. well. If you can get 
you know, take a couple years and close five deals. I guarantee you those five deals were turning into 25. But those first five deals are so hard to get. I chased, I mean, I remember Joyce would give me leads. I would sit open houses, which I also really recommend sitting open houses. Week after week, I would go look at homes on Tuesdays, go look at homes on Sundays. I would talk to my friends. I would get add everyone into my email database yeah. and I would send out emails to all of them. But nothing for months. I mean, in fact, my first sale was a lead that I got from, uh, from my former partner. Mm -hmm. Um, honestly, if it wasn't for that, it would have been over a year before I made any money. So it is just, I wish there was like an easy answer. It is difficult. I would suggest partnering with a really good agent that can teach you. Like Joyce, you know, was an amazing mentor to me. I just, uh, Joyce Ray is you know, one of the most amazing real estate agents to ever walk the planet. She's she is. unbelievable. Uh, the most beautiful, ethical, straight shooting uh, woman. And to work with her, I think is what but brought me to where I am. So I would recommend working at a, at a good brokerage, working at a place that offers training and working somewhere where there's a team environment, even though like you weren't on my team, like we were just kind of disparate agents. Right. It's nice to be around agents. It's nice to, honestly, I learned a lot just by listening. I was in that office with Stacy Gatula, who's also unbelievable, her and Joyce, just listening to what they were doing. Um, and honestly, they made it look easy. Like they motivated me because I'm like, gosh, these, these women are just dominating. Mm -hmm. Um, and they do it so effortlessly. I can do this. So I think it gives you that confidence yeah. to see that other people are doing it, right. but don't get, don't be fooled. Don't think that you're just going to, that you're going to be them just because they can do it. It, it is not that easy. I'm, I've met a lot of my best clients at open houses. Even today, you know, a lot of successful agents don't sit open houses anymore. And I've admittedly, you know, slacked off a little bit from as much as I used to uh, sit when I was younger. But I think if you sit open houses, you find great clients. I met Jeff Thomas who I've done, I mean, tens of millions of dollars of real estate with, not including this $40 million house that I'm gonna sell for him. And he walked into an open house of mine. He didn't buy that house, but you know, we talked and I, I started yep. sending him other listings and I have met, oh my goodness, I would say I've built half my business from meeting clients at open houses. Um, and then from there, it's a lot of referrals and a lot of repeat business. The nice thing about the Hollywood Hills is these people buy a house, three years later, they want to sell it and they want to buy a bigger house. It's not like we're selling homes in Hancock Park where the average turnover is like 15 or 20 years and these families buy there and they live there and they right. raise their kids there. And there's like five homes a year that sell. I mean, this here, really everyone. a younger demographic. People move yeah. here when they're single and then they somehow meet someone like a few years later and then they're buying a home somewhere else. That's, yeah, so uh, yeah. Jeff's a perfect example. Yeah. He gets married, he moves somewhere else. Or I think even more, um, uh, more commonly, they just want to, they're continuing to make more money. These are, you know, there's such wealthy people living here and they're usually young and, and hustling and selling their equity or whatever it is. And they go buy a $3 million house and two years later they want a $5 million house and then they want a $10 million house. So you're buying and selling all the time. Yeah. There's a lot of people that just sit open houses and they just sit on the couch like we are now and they're like, oh, hi, you know, thanks for coming in. It's 5,000 square feet. Let me know if you have any questions. Yeah. You're not so going to get a let client. Let me know if you have any questions. No, I, love that. I, I follow them. And I say, listen, what are you looking for? What have you seen today that's on the market? Oh, you saw, you know, 840 Foothill, great house. You know, the ceilings are a little bit low, but it's got great views. Um, you know, I don't, uh, maybe it's got a nice pool. You make a comment on it, you, you know, you, you, a little bit, you can be critical if, if you don't like what, what they're talking about the house. Or I guess the general point is you need to engage with that person. You need to show them that you understand the market. There are, in fact, you can say, listen, there are three other homes on the market you should see because this home is the best. Mm -hmm. The reason this home is the best is because it's got, you know, a walk-in closet. It's, it's larger. It's got larger flat land and, you know, it's got a better view. It's got a better floor plan. It's got better parking. But go look at this house across the street and I encourage you to go look at that house and then give me a call. And by the way, don't just sign into this little sheet, which I cannot read people's handwriting. Doesn't they just matter. scribble some crappy email. I can never yeah. read it. So pull out your phone. Oh, your name is Jeff Thomas. What's your cell phone? Oh, you don't want to give me your cell phone? Can I get your email, please? Let me put you on my email list. Right. That's awesome. And then I also I like to ask them actually, like, where are you living now? Are you looking at moving into this area? Just ask some questions so you look engaged and serious and you're not just that agent. They meet probably, what, five or 10 agents a day on these open houses. You got to be the guy they remember. Yeah. So how did you, you then, so how did you then transition into buying and investing in real estate? Well, obviously it takes a little bit of capital to do that. So I had to save up some capital from uh, rep just representing people. And then I saw a lot of the other agents in the business that are the really successful, really wealthy people in real estate. Don't just represent buyers and sellers, uh, but they also do their own real estate investing. So they buy a house, remodel it, flip it, rent it out, whatever. So I've been doing that for, I don't know, you know as well as I do, probably. 
12, I think. Yeah, I six. Yeah. I think that's right. But my first house in, yeah. in, in 12 or 13. Yeah. So, and you've scaled up from that to now, how many homes do you have? And what's the total combined value? It's a lot. 20 to 20. 25 million, I think I have. But again, I have leverage on that. I have, I have loans on that. You're right. Um, but I rent them out. I just sold one. I just sold Harold for 5.1. Mm -hmm. um, what did you buy that for? 3.5. So a perfect example. Bought it for 3.5 put in a half a million dollars plus into a remodel, sold it, you know, made a million dollars in, in a year's worth of work and it wasn't that much work. You do that a couple of times, you, re, you reinvest that capital back into a larger house. Um, and then I've, of course I got carried away on my own house and now I've just loved it so much I just moved in. Um, so, you know, it's fun. I mean, I just love real estate. I love investing. You've, I mean, I, you're the one that should be teaching all these people about investing. I do. So, all right, good. I do. You've got probably more houses than I do. How many do you have? Five. I have six. <laughs> there we go. Did there it. you go. End the video right there. <laughs> Cut. What is your advice to everyone watching? Uh, chances are they're going to want to get in involved in real estate in some capacity or another. Yeah. So either the type of person, how they can one day buy a house like that, or if they want to be a developer, want to, just like a minute of just whatever sure. your advice is. I feel like I have a lot of advice. I could, I could talk forever here, but I'll try to keep yeah. it short. Because I feel like one of the things that uh, you have to stay focused on is not getting ahead of yourself. And I don't mean that you're not ambitious. Uh, and I don't mean that you don't dream big, but it's baby steps. You don't walk into a $10 million house and buy it. You don't uh, buy, your first house is gonna be small. Your first sales are gonna be small. In fact, I honestly, Graham, I think you're a perfect example of somebody who started off really hustling, you know, small leases that, oh, yeah. that turned into, five, $10 million sales. Right. So hustle, in fact, I mean, you, didn't you just, you put a property on Craigslist or something like that, yeah. or West Side Rentals, yeah, West Side and Rentals. that's turned into now like that $20 million seven, of sales. Yeah, seven million million sale, and then now a $9 million sale. Yeah, and then we Craigslist. did, and so honestly, I think you're the perfect example of what I'm trying to get across here, which is that dream big, mm -hmm. but start small. Because I remember, I used to listen to you. Uh, there was nobody that worked harder in that office. And I would just hear you hustling over there, answering phone calls, you know, running down leases, three, $4,000 a month leases, which yeah. I guess, you know. Less than that. I was even doing $2,000 a month leases. Really? Which I'm sure to some people in the country watching, they're like, yeah. whoa, $2,000. But $2,000 a month now, th th those like, aren't even on the MLS anymore. No, I mean, like you've got a- bedroom apartment in yeah. a, like a so-so part of town, basically. But, the, but what you did was, and yeah. what I think is a good example, is that you started with these small leases, and then eventually these people, you know, became, got married or, or, or got a better job. And then they started leasing a $10,000 house. Right. And now, and they buy a $1 million house. I mean, you put a listing of mine on the market on like Craigslist or West Side Rentals or something like that. Yeah. And it turned into what? Yeah, $7 million deal. And then, and then a $9, $9 million, million deal. deal. And then another one, my Viewmont property you put on. Oh, and then we, that's a $25,000 a month lease. And then a $6 million sale. That's true. I forgot yeah, about that Yeah, I mean, right. you, ju you start small. Bottom line, there's no, there's no, this is not the matrix. We just pop a pill and all of a sudden, you know, the rabbit hole's there. You start small, you work hard, and honestly, you got to be smart too. Yeah. I mean, you got to know what you're doing. I mean, don't let this guy, you know, fool you with his charm. This guy <laughs> hustles and he's super smart. And I think that's what it takes. And you can learn real estate. I mean, you really can. You don't have a college degree, no. right? And I barely have a high school diploma. Like I barely passed high but school. But you're one of the smartest guys in real estate that I know. So you can, I know Nico, I'll get you some food in a second, okay? Okay, 10 seconds or less, hustle, because there's no, there's no trick, you just gotta hustle and, and be smart. And that means educate yourself. When I, didn't, when I wasn't making any money in real estate, which was the first couple of years, I was literally pulling out, and I don't want to date myself, but I mean, this is eight years yeah. ago. They didn't even have like, we had like actual maps and shit. And we were looking on and just looking at streets, memorizing every street name. And, and the reason why is this. If I went to a restaurant that night and I met someone sitting next to me, he says, oh, I, I live on Floral. Or, oh, I, you know, I, I live on, you know, whatever, Sunset Plaza Drive. Right. I want to know his street. I want to know if there's parking on his street. I want to know what house recently sold on that street. I want to know, shit, I want to know his house. I mean, yeah. what's your address? Because I want to know your house. Oh, I love your house. It's got that beautiful brick in front. You've got those, all oh, that Edison lighting out front. Beautiful house. And the guy's like, damn, you know your shit. Mm -hmm. So it's just hard work and, and, and there's no substitute. I, I, I don't want to digress too much, but I remember Joyce, my partner, I would go to a listing with her and, and, and I would listen to her. I know Nico, hold on, Bubby. And I would listen to her talk and she'd be like, oh, I know your neighbor, I sold his house twice. I sold it in 84 yeah. and then they did a remodel and they added a 600 square foot kitchen and then I sold it again in 91. I'm like, oh my God, if I could be like her. And now I'm starting to feel like that confidence, like I know all these houses now. Right.